Hey everybody, welcome to my video on indifference curves where we try to figure out what, how to know do we get an interior or a corner solution? A uh, little bit of background. An interior solution is one where we're going to choose sum of good x and sum of good y when maximizing our utility. And in the past it has looked something like this. There's your indifference curve, there's your budget constraint, there's this one perfect point where they are tangent to each other, where the slope of the indifference curve equals the budget constraint. See, the slope of the indifference curve is marginal rate of substitution. Oops. And it is equal to minus Px over Py. And that's great. Now, we often make big assumptions about the utility function. For instance, some of our assumptions create indifference curves that never touch the axis. This side will never actually touch the x-axis. It will, uh, will go farther and farther and just get closer and closer and closer and never quite touch it. Likewise for y, a lot of times we'll make assumptions where our indifference curves will never touch the y-axis. Now, why do we make assumptions like that? Well, it's to ensure that there will be a corner, that there will be an interior solution. See, as the indifference curve gets closer and closer to x, or sorry, to the x-axis, uh, its slope gets flatter and flatter. It will get infinitely close to being zero. Likewise, on the y-axis, as we get closer and closer to zero x and lots of y, our slope will get infinitely closer to being infinite. It will increase without bound. Which means that as long as our marginal rate of substitution, or sorry, as long as our price ratio falls somewhere between zero and infinity, there will be an interior solution. So as long as our goods cost something, there will be an interior solution. Great. Now, let's talk about a utility function where we might not have that. Because I told you this is by assumption. I've assumed that it never touches either axis. So let's see what happens if it does. Let's look at a situation now where our indifference curves look something like this. Where the MRS over here, at the very tip, is negative 1, and the MRS here is minus 0.5. And then as you went infinitely out this way, it would still approach, oops, not infinity, it would still approach 0 as you go far enough out that direction. Well, now we've got a limitation on our price, on our price ratio that would allow for interior solutions. Instead of being able to exist between zero and infinity and having anything give an interior solution, now the only way to get an interior solution is to have somewhere between zero and one. Unless the price ratio is in that range, uh, it will be impossible to get a tangency condition. So. Let me illustrate this for a moment. If, let's draw the case that works well first. If the price of good Y is equal to twice what the price of good X is. Well, then let's see. Negative PX over PY equals minus PX over 2PX was minus one half. There is a point where the marginal rate of substitution is minus one half. And that's at a point right there. We're going to pretend that that's where the tangency is. We can still have an interior solution even though our utility curve doesn't fit the standard assumptions. But if that price ratio changes, if instead we had PY or sorry, 2PY equals PX, then negative PX 
over PY is equal to 2. And that, my friend, that minus 2 will never allow for an interior solution. We can only have interior solutions on this curve if they're between 0 and 1. 2 is outside of it. In other words, the budget constraint is steeper than the indifference curve ever is. It will never be tangent. And that is a situation where we will get a corner solution. Uh, I will choose all of one good that gives me higher utility than if I chose any of good x. For instance, if I were to move along this line to a point like this, it would push me to some lower level of utility. If I moved farther along, some lower level of utility. Farther along. Some, all right, you get the idea. The way that makes me happiest in this case is to buy all of the good that puts me on that axis. So, uh, I don't know if this is helpful for you or not. I hope so. The reason our standard utility function guarantees an interior solution is because it allows for any slope. If you break that assumption, you limit the amount of slopes that can give an interior solution and you're opening up the potential for a corner solution like the one shown here. I hope it was helpful. If not, at least it wasn't too long. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. Happy econing.